Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and man, I'm starting to feel it. I really am. I mean, we just had the uh, Monday media luncheon press conference with Joey McGuire and offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, defensive coordinator Tim DeRuder, and got to talk a lot of Texas Tech football as we're just days away from the season kicking off, and uh, it's time to talk Texas Tech offense. Now, I posted uh, some previews I did about the offense and the defense uh, for KCBD, you know, uh, local station here in Lubbock. Uh, my, my buddy Pete Christie, who I do the rockin' uh, pregame with on 101.1 uh, here at local radio station in Lubbock, uh, he had me on his TV uh, show, his TV station, to do the preview. But uh, I'm going to go a little more in-depth. Texas Tech released uh, the depth chart. The, the game, the official game day depth chart for the season opener against Murray State, uh, which kicks off 7 p.m. Central Time Saturday uh, here at the Jones here in Lubbock. Um, but no real surprises with the depth chart. For one, I mean, we had great access. We were, uh, which is a lot of the practices this fall camp, a lot of the practices during spring ball. So we had a really good idea of who was running with the ones, who was running with the twos. But also, I got to give a tip of the cap to Joey McGuire and uh, his whole coaching staff, but especially McGuire, about really keeping us in the loop with the depth chart. I mean, I've covered not just at Texas Tech, but at other programs, uh, coaches were who tried to be really uh, vague about the depth chart, like they were keeping something. You know, uh, eventually the teams are going to see who you're playing. They have a good idea, anyways, at this level. Uh, teams across the country really know. I mean, they know their stuff, and they know the personnel the teams are playing. So, yeah, to me, that's kind of just a waste of time for everybody. Uh, so, Joey McGuire really um, talking with us, keeping all of us and Red Raider Nation, the fan base, in the loop about who's going to play uh, is really appreciated. It just saves a lot of time, unnecessary. Uh, there's a lot of unnecessary, um, what's the right word, uh, guessing involved um, or kind of games uh, with, with some other staffs again not just the Texas Tech but in the past of uh, covering other programs so I think this is better it's better to know your team and uh, so there weren't a lot of surprises with the game day depth chart but I'm going to go over it uh, the starting offensive line and I asked Coach McGuire about the offensive line I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute uh, but left tackle you have Caleb Rogers returning starter another returning starter Western Weston Wright at left guard at center, one of the surprises for me, small surprise, Dennis Wilbur Wilburn, who transferred in from uh, Hutchinson Community College, is the starting center. Uh, at right guard, you have Landon Peterson from uh, West Texas, uh, of course, famous high school football program, almost mythical because of the the movies and the, the book, of course, Friday Night Lights and, uh, you know, TV shows being made off of it, but Odessa Permian, Mojo. Uh, and then right tackle, Monroe Mills, who transferred in from Oklahoma State. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I wouldn't have thought when he transferred in that he would be the starting right tackle, but by all accounts, he's made uh, great strides and uh, really take advantage of his opportunities. But speaking of right tackle, I think that's going to be one of the battles, ongoing battles of Coach McGuire said as much on Monday when I asked him about the offensive line during his press conference. Uh, Ty Buchanan, who uh, transferred, he's a Texan native, uh, but he's from Corpus Christi, Cal Island High School originally, but he went out to USC for at least a year and uh, transferred here to Texas Tech this offseason. Those two guys are going to be battling for that, for really the snaps and the starting gig at right tackle for at least a couple weeks, if not longer. Uh, and then Jacoby Jackson, I mentioned before, and copy on these videos. Uh, really talented. He's a guy who had like over 40 offers and chose Texas Tech. Um, 6'6", 320, 325 pounds, and he can move. He's an athletic dude. Good football player. I thought he'd be another year away just because of the way offensive line works, but uh, just, just the development of most offensive linemen. But as a redshirt freshman, he's already a swing guard, and uh, Coach McGuire said he might start. Like It might be a better look for Texas Tech if Jackson is starting at right guard instead of backing up Western right at left guard and kind of being a, a swing guard. But he's going to play in the opener against Murray State as well. And then Kate Briggs, who I originally thought was going to be the starter at center, he's going to get some run at center, and he might get a look at guard as well. So those are the eight guys on the offensive line I expect to play a lot against Murray State. Some of the other guys might get in as well if it's a blowout. But uh, those are the guys who are going to be in the mix. Of course, Cole Spencer, we're still waiting for – um, August 31st is the date McGuire and, and the, uh, the training staff has given to, to kind of make a decision on are they going to try and get him back in a, in a couple of weeks 
Is he going to sit, be out an extended period, or even will he apply for a medical redshirt? So Cole Spencer, I mentioned him in a previous video, or several previous videos, but he's a guy who uh, was all-conference USA at Western Kentucky for his, uh, Texas Tech offensive coordinator Zach Kidley and uh, offensive line coach Stephen Hamby. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if they get him back because he's obviously a good football player, very experienced, and uh, he would figure in uh, at the guard spots as well. So. A lot going on with the offensive line. They, at least they do have numbers. Um, Coach McGuire said they are light years ahead of where they were uh, during spring ball, which is a good thing, uh, very good thing. But the rest of the offense I really like. Of course, Tyler Shuck's been named the starting quarterback, 6'5", 230. He has an NFL arm. His, his arm has wowed me on many occasions, uh, not just um, last year, but this offseason. I mean, he can make the throw to the boundary you know, across the field into uh, West Texas gust uh, of wind and, and still look like, you know, it's nothing. Uh, nothing come off the ball. He's, uh, he has very, he has exciting arm talent, to be honest. Um, he can run, been clocked at a 4-7. Um, he actually, Coach McGuire said he, he mentioned to, uh, the Shuck mentioned McGuire, hey, Coach, you know I can run. You don't have to bring these other quarterbacks in. Uh, for running packages, but they are going to do that. Donovan Smith's going to get some uh, red zone packages probably. Uh, McGuire said Bear Morton will come in as a change of pace guy. He actually mentioned something I said um, on a previous report, actually on Pete's uh, show, about him probably being the best quarterback throwing on, uh, at throwing on the run. And that all three can do it, but Morton has a real knack for throwing on the run. He is very, very good at it. So just for a different look, they might use him some uh, against Murray State. So I like all three quarterbacks. Running backs, I mean, Sir Roger Thompson, I think he's fifth in all time in Texas Tech in, in career touchdown runs. Uh, I've liked him since the first half Solomon practice when he shook Jordan Brooks, who's starring for the Seattle Seahawks right now, in, in a drill. I said, you know, well, this guy, he may be better than we thought, certainly better than the recruiting rankings. And uh, when healthy, Sir Roderick has been really good, but that's really been the thing is, uh, you know, can he stay healthy? He can be explosive. Uh, like, like I said, he has a nose for the end zone. He can get those short yardage uh, play. He can move the chains on, in short yardage situations. And I think he's a better receiver than he's been utilized uh, at so far. I think that's something they're going to look at a lot. Taj Brooks, I mean, you can make the argument that Brooks might be better than Sir Roger Thompson after all that I said about Sir Roger. So both are complete backs. Both bring a lot. Um, they're veteran. It's just can they stay healthy. And Taj was banged up earlier in fall camp. But McGuire, again, on Monday confirmed uh, that Brooks is back. Uh, he was running around looking good, and uh, he, they expect him to be full go this week against Murray State. Uh, staying with running backs, Cameron Valdez is out for at least a couple weeks. They, the McGuire, or at least a week. This week, McGuire said he does expect, um, he's very confident that Valdez uh, will be back in time for the NC State game, which is the third game of the season. And that's, I hate that for Valdez because he had a great camp. Uh, all these great things were said about him, and I, I really thought he was going to get a, a lot of opportunities this week against Murray State. But uh, that gives Bryson Donnell, the true freshman, who I also like. Um, he's been there all fall camp. I think I've seen him every day. Uh, he's going to get an opportunity to get some carries, no doubt. Uh, you know, assuming Texas Tech handles their business against Murray State. So that'll be interesting to see. That'll be exciting to see him. I uh, have receiver. I mean, they're loaded. They're really big. Jaram Bradley is out on the outside. Uh, 6'5", 215. He's actually down some weight. Looking really good. I expect him to have a monster year. Also outside, uh, opposite him, uh, Loic, Loic Fungi. I'm going to get it right. Loic Fungi. Uh, 6'4", 220, and really fast. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. He's a four-star recruit for a reason. Uh, he chose Tech over Texas, um, you know, late in his recruiting process. Uh, he's continued to develop. Those two guys together, I mean, the size they give you in the athleticism, uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but then inside, uh, Miles Price, I asked Zach Kitley, uh, offensive coordinator, about him. He said, basically, look, I just try and get guys the ball any way I can, you know, Playmakers. So it's not about running plays and hoping the best guy, uh, you know, gets the ball. He was specifically target Miles Price in the slot. And I think he's going to have a monster year. Xavier White's also, as expected, uh, listed as a starter in, in the slot. Um, you have a bunch of guys that I really like 
uh, backing them up. J.J. Sparman, 6'4", 220 playing there uh, with Bradley at the same position outside. Brady Boyd is a guy to watch. He's going to play both inside and outside. Transferred in from Minnesota. Uh, played at South Lake Carroll. About 6'1", you know, 195. His measurables don't really wow you, though he's very fast. He runs like around a 4'4". Um, but he catches everything. His catch radius is way bigger than his size, so I, I really like him. And He was really good in the spring and fall camp. Coy Aiken from Stephenville, true freshman. Coach McGuire said he's going to play, and that's another guy who he just looks bigger than his measurables. And, uh, you know, he uh, led the nation in catches and uh, in receptions and receiving yards last year as a senior. So what a great late get for Texas Tech and uh, Coy Aiken out of Stephenville. So, and he's going to help in the return game as well. Uh, Trey Cleveland's inside, another good football player. Nehemiah Martinez it d will do a little bit of everything inside, um, play some running back. Uh, just a really good player. He was great at Cooper, um, you know, local guy when I, when I saw him. Uh, I didn't see him. I believe he was at New Deal before. I, ne I never saw him there, but I saw him at Cooper, and he was a, he's just a heck of a football player. Uh, you got to find a way to get him on the field. Jordan Brown's another receiver. He's been kind of banged up late in camp, but I uh, really like what I've seen from him. He transferred in from Kansas uh, with outside receivers coach Emmett Jones. So I really like the receiving core. Um, I like their running backs. I like their quarterbacks. Offensive line. I just keep coming back to that. If they if they can come together, they're going to have a really salty offense for this uh, young and up and coming offensive coordinator Zach Kinley, uh, who was 24/7 Sports Offensive Coordinator of the Year for the country last year. So, um, and then tight ends. They have they have some really good size. Uh, you know, you think of Mason Tarp, 6'9", 255, and can run. Uh, they brought in Baylor Cup, former five star guy. I believe he went to Brock High School as a star there. Um, you know, west, just west of the Metroplex there. Um, he's 6'6", 240. Can play, you know, he's a good football player when you, if he can stay healthy. But then there's Henry Teeter, which I asked Coach Kidley about. You know, he's the least heralded tight end of, of, of all of them. But uh, there's just – the best way to say it is he's like one of those glue guys for a basketball team. So everybody respects him. Everybody knows how tough he is. Everybody knows he's going to give a maximum effort. And uh, he's a good inline blocker. He's a good receiver. We haven't seen him in games as much, but I've seen him in spring games and, and practice a lot. He makes some amazing catches, so I hope he gets the opportunity as well. So – I really like this offense. I think they're going to put up a lot of points. Um, I hope they're balanced. But, again, Coach Kitley on Monday said that he doesn't really care about running the ball 50% of the time or 65-35 uh, split. He He's going to do what basically is dictated by the weaknesses on the defense, what he thinks he can exploit, what matchups he can take advantage of. And then, like I said, getting the ball – Finding the best ways to get the ball in his best playmaker's hands, like Miles Price and some of those big targets on the outside. So, and his running backs. So, I think a lot's on the offensive line, a lot's on Tyler Shuck to do like he told me when I asked him what's it going to take to take the next step. Uh, he needs to play within himself, not try and do too much. If he can limit those turnovers and those big mistakes and just get the ball to his playmakers, again, the Red Raiders are going it, to, it's going to be a familiar sight. We're going to see him light up the scoreboard. So, um, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see them play. I know it's Murray State, but I'm ready to see them play somebody else. I'm ready for a night game at the Jones. And, uh, you know, I've talked about fall camp ending. I have all kinds of stuff, uh, all kinds of content, written content posted on the board. I'm going to uh, about breakout players. Uh, at some point soon, if I haven't posted by the time this video is posted, uh, you know, top takeaways from McGuire's. Uh, press conference. We'll have notes from the coordinators as well. Uh, podcast interviews with the players, uh, which I haven't gone to yet. So, uh, but on Tuesday, there, there's going to be some players available Tuesday morning. So I'll, I'll have some audio for you as well inside the Red Raiders, and I'll have the defensive video and the special teams video coming up in the coming days, and all kind of Big 12 picks. Uh, season preview from Monty Joe, uh, all, all, all that stuff, a uh, whole bunch of content coming to you on Inside the Red Raiders this week as, as uh, Texas Tech gets ready to kick off the Joey McGuire era. So if you can't tell, I'm fired up. I hope you are too. But for now, thanks for watching, and until next time.